With the modern advances of technology today, let's take a look back to see how far we have come since the invention of the television. In 1926, John Logie Baird, a Scotsman, was able to discern human faces using a NIPCAL disc to transmit moving images at around 30 line resolutions. A NIPCAL disc is a disc containing sets of small holes embedded in it that rotate and perform a mechanical scan. His invention is considered to be the first electromechanical television system. One year later, the American inventor Philo Farnsworth created the first all-electronic television set. In 1928, Farnsworth showed his creation of the all-electronic television to the press for the first time, a year after its invention. Within the same year, the television station W2XB was created as a test run by General Electric and broadcasted by using similar technology as Baird's Nipkow disc. Felix the Cat was the main star of the broadcast as General Electric also began to test images of human subjects. The first television receivers were built by General Electric and rumors flourished about their distribution to the public, but the company ultimately decided against it. Articles describing how to build your own television receiver were published by George H. Waltz, and different companies began developing and selling mechanical television sets to the public. The Jenkins Television Model 200 radio visor and receiver, which had an 8-inch screen, sold for $189.59. The first television drama, The Queen's Messenger, was broadcasted on September 11, 1928. Only the actors' faces and hands were shown due to the small sizes of the screen. W2XBS was created as an electromagnetic television station in New York City. During 1931, an exhibition shown at the Berlin Radio Show developed by Manfred von Arden demonstrates an all-electronic television system. This new setup was developed by using a cathode ray tube to pick up the image in the camera and the image display through the receiver. Three years later, Philo Farnsworth gave his first public demonstration of his electronic television for 10 days at the Franklin Institute of Philadelphia. In Berlin, an electronic television service was developed and broadcasted in 1935. Close by in London a year later, the British Broadcasting Company transmitted from the Victoria Alexander Palace using high definition resolution. This service eventually became BBC One and has been referred to as the origin of modern television. W2XVS broadcast the President Franklin Roosevelt's opening of the New York World Fair in 1939. NBC and CBS broadcasted the first commercial stations in 1941. In the years 1941 to 1946, World War II saw further progress in the television industry and only six stations were left on air after it was over. By 1948, ABC, CBS, NBC, and Dumont were broadcasted and scheduled seven days a week from 8 to 11 p.m. The 1950s were known as the golden age of television. This is because television usage dramatically increased during this time period and so many advancements were made. By 1951, the number of television sets in use reached over 12 million, a 2,000% increase since 1946. Television really evolved during the 50s through events like covering presidential nominations and stepping away from radio formats. Programs such as Today and The Tonight Show were born and became extremely popular magazine-style programs. By the mid-1950s, more than half of American homes had televisions and the television networks began to compete with newspapers as the primary news source. The Huntley Brinkley Report on NBC became one of the most popular news sources at the time. By the end of the 1950s, more than 60 million television sets had been sold. Television in the 1960s was full of situation comedies, westerns, soap operas, and sporting events. In 1960, America had about 640 community antenna television systems, otherwise referred to as cable TV. While entertainment became a much larger focal point for television networks than ever before, the news was still the major focus. The three major networks, ABC, NBC, and CBS, almost exclusively dominated television in the 1960s, along with a few independent stations only in large cities. CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite debuted on CBS in 1962. The 60s became known as the decade of hard news when Huntley, Brinkley, and Crockett made primetime evening news a staple of American television. In 1964, color broadcasting began on primetime television. Also beginning in 1964, the Vietnam War was broadcasted nightly in two to three minute segments. The coverage was heavily criticized for being biased and telescoping events. Some military and political leaders went as far as suggesting that television lost the war for the United States. In 1967, Congress created a non-commercial public television network called the Public Broadcasting System, better known as PBS, as a fourth major network. More and more television services would soon begin to make an appearance. In 1972, America's first successful pay cable service, HBO, made its debut. Betamax was developed in 1975 by Sony with the purpose of compactly storing information using as little tape as possible. It was able to record about an hour's worth of audio and video on a single tape. VHS was introduced two years later in 1977. 
VHS was able to record two hours of footage instead of one. VHS tapes were also more compact than ones used for Betamax. Compared to VHS, Betamax recorded higher quality video and audio footage. It also offered more functionality through direct playback, but the cassette tapes were more prone to wear. JVC also licensed the VHS format to other electronic manufacturers in order to increase market saturation. This, as well as better marketing techniques, allowed VHS to suppress Betamax and become the dominant format of the market. In 1986, JVC introduced Super VHS, which allowed for better quality recordings than VHS, but still retaining the ability to record more footage than Betamax. At the World's Fair in 1999, the world was introduced to TiVo, the very first DVR device. DVRs completely revolutionized television by working hand-in-hand -hand with live television. DVRs could be programmed to record live television programs, which allowed the viewer to save their favorite programs to be re-watched at a later time or to be saved in the event that the viewer cannot watch the program live. This can even extend to having your weekly program recorded like clockwork and can even record programs in the same quality as live television. DVR also allowed users to instantly rewind to a desired segment and rewatch scenes of interest. As the turn of the century came around and computers successfully survived the millennium bug, TV began to move into another golden age, the golden age of US television. In the year 2000, there were over 150 cable TV channels with more being added all the time. TV was becoming more accessible and price friendly as technology improved and were able to be produced with cheaper expenses. In the year 2000, the average price of a TV is around $1,000 and dropping. TV is showing up everywhere, in cabs, at gas stations, on planes, and even in restrooms. Almost as soon as America and the world were hooked on television, an event occurred that would change the course of history forever, the brutal and inhuman terrorist attacks of 9-11. Often heard is the phrase, the whole world watched. TV was the main way that people found out about the attacks and saw the destruction that occurred. This was also an important landmark in the media. Starting moments after the first attack, the three major news stations, CBS, NBC, and ABC, all broadcasted for 90 hours straight with no commercial breaks. The importance of television became clear during the event, and by coincidence or not, TV sets were being bought more than ever. By 2004, a little more than 98% of American households have a television, and the average home has more than two. The way television was being delivered was also changing. 2006 marked an important milestone when TV was delivered in both analog and digital formats. Also in 2006, the way we watched movies on TV changed as DVD use finally took over VCR use. Soon, companies realized the cost-effectiveness of digital TV, and the US mandated that everyone switch to digital. If you didn't have it, all you needed was to purchase a box to convert your signal. Anyone who didn't would just see this. As soon as the 2010s hit, companies were big on monetizing digital programming. It was the fight for who would get the most viewers and the most view time. TV began to become even more accessible in 2011, as it was now available on small portable devices like phones and laptops. As we hit the middle of the decade, smart TVs with internet access really took off. Now we can watch our favorite TV show, search Google to learn about the actors, and shop online for fan gear, all right from our comfy chairs. In 2016, a political event showed how far the world has come in delivering TV to customers when Hillary Clinton faced off Donald Trump in the first presidential debate. Across multiple news platforms, 84 million people tuned in to see the show go down. So where do we stand now? TV continues to change in all ways. Programming more channels, selling airtime, delivering news and politics in every fashion, and even putting TV on the internet through things like YouTube TV. Who's to say what we will see in the future? Will TV devices continue to get smaller or larger? TVs will probably get thinner and more lightweight, and more efficient. They will most likely follow the cord cutting revolution and become cordless, enhancing portability. Organic LED TVs will create brighter and sharper images, and content will continue to be available on multiple platforms. We have come such a long way since the Scotsman and 30 line resolution, and the possibilities for the future are endless.